Hey, Mr. H here. Still trying to get a couple things situated, but we're looking pretty good here. We are going to take a look at our last section of the trig unit before we get ready for the test, which is some modeling of our trig. So the stuff at the top should be familiar at this point. A is our amplitude. B, we determine once we have our period, which we find by having 2 pi over B. You're like, what's all this different stuff? It's like everything else we've been doing. We know that 2 pi over our period is going to be B. But depending on what information we're given, we may have to adjust slightly. So I've made all the adjustment options here for you. But to be honest, we're still just doing 2 pi over B. Okay. A is our amplitude. K is our center line. So just get that in there just to be sure we're on the same page here. And if you are going to be doing this in the calculator and not using your brain, make sure you are putting parentheses around the max and min. Okay, so number one. Oh boy, this looks crazy. Write a sinusoidal function, sine, with maximum at A and minimum at B. Okay, a couple things to remember before we even try to get into this. When we're doing sine, okay, typically a sine value starts at zero or starts at my center line. Goes up to the max, comes back to the center, goes down to the min, comes back to the center. Okay, we got our we got our curve here. So here's my max. Here's my min. Okay, so it could be useful since we were told that the max is at A and the min is at B, and we know we're going to have five points. Say, okay, if the max is at A. It's only one max. We know the min is going to be at B, and we know that this is at 8. This is negative 8. Okay. I know my other three points within this sine graph are all going to be at the center line. I probably shouldn't have assumed it was going to be 0. I'm going to show you that in a minute anyway. But it will be in this case. So I'd have my graph here. So how do I know all this stuff? Okay, first thing we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is find our amplitude. So my max is at 8. My min is at negative 8, because again, I'm told that right here. So my amplitude is max minus min, this, divided by 2. So 8 plus 8 would be 16 divided by 2 would be 8. My center line, my midline, is going to be, I'm going to call it K here, is my max, 8, plus my min, negative 8. 8 plus negative 8 is 0, divided by 2 is 0. See, I knew what I was talking about with my center line being at 0. Okay, So we've got that. So as I'm starting to look at what my equation is going to look like, I'm like, okay, I've got my amplitude. I do not have my B value yet. We're getting to that here momentarily. And since my K is 0, could I put plus 0 there? Sure. Do I need to? Not really. So how do I find B? So here's how I like to do it. So my 8, the x value is at pi. My min, it was at 3 pi. Now I got a little bit of work to do. I got to figure out what those other values are. Well, let's use a little common sense. What's in between 1 and 3? 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I start at 0 and I go to 4 pi, that's where my pattern or my cycle ends. So my period is 4 pi, but that's not what I'm looking for. I want b. So to get b, 2 pi over b equals my period. And I just make it a fraction because, to me, dealing with a proportion is going to be easier to work with. So 4 pi b equals 2 pi 
And since I want to solve for b, I divide by all the stuff that's with it. So my b value is 1 half. You could even put um, x over 2 if you wanted to there. But that's it. I've got my function. I just find those three pieces. So you notice I kind of have a strategy on how I want to tackle these. So let's let's peek at another one and kind of make sure we're, we're feeling okay here. So I got my five points. And I got my max at 2 pi 1. And I've got my min. at 6 pi, negative 3. I'm not going to get ahead of myself this time. I'm just going to give myself a little idea here of what's going on. And I'm actually going to figure these out. So my amplitude, again, taking my max minus my min, dividing it by 2. So 1 plus 3 would be 4 divided by 2 is 2. Then I do my, my midline, my center line. My k value, again, I take my max plus my min. Divide it by 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, which makes sense. It's right in the middle of my max and min. So, I mean, a lot of times I could just do that in my head even if I wanted to. So why is that important to make note of and not just make my graph right away like I assumed in number one? Because here, notice my center line isn't at zero, it's at negative one. So my first point, my third point, and my fifth point are all on the center line. So they're all at negative one. If I'd have put them all at zero right away, I'd have done it wrong. And so finally then, let's get together our period between 2 and 6 pi, 4 pi, 2, 4, 6, 8 pi. So to find my b, 2 pi over b is 8 pi over 1. 8 pi b equals 2 pi. Get a division here. B is going to be 1 fourth. So in this case, we've got our amplitude, sine of 1 fourth x. That could be theta, whatever it happens to be. And this time I have a center line that moved. So I need to make sure that I get that in there. Okay. So whenever it says it's a sinusoidal function, if you go along those steps, it'll be easier. Plot the min and max, okay? Use those min and maxes to get your amplitude and your center line. Get that in so I can get those other three points in, and then I'm going to have everything I need to get my cycle, to get my period. Okay, now let's do a little application work here. Ooh, applications, those are always fun. All right. The displacement of a both water line above sea level as it moves over waves can be modeled by 2 times sine 2 pi t. That's pi t, not some funky new letter that Hardy has made up. My t just got a little close here. Where t is the time in seconds. Graph the height of the boat over a three-second time interval. Okay. So here's my deal. I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, there's a couple of things I can figure out, okay? They gave me my amplitude. My amplitude is A. My amplitude is A. Yes, it is. But in this case, it's 2, okay? So I'm going to go as high as 2 and as low as negative 2 since that was right there. They also gave me my B value, which is 2 pi. Now, again, that's not the period, though. The period is 2 pi over b, which in this case would be 2 pi over 2 pi, or 1. 
So what does that mean? It's going to be one second per cycle. Okay, so why is that important? Because the question asked me to graph the height over a three-second time interval. You're like, wait a minute, what? They want me to graph three cycles. So I want to make sure I get enough lines here because I start here and then I'm like, okay, normally that would be enough. But now I need it for, ooh, let's do this. This will be fun. A second cycle. And a third cycle. Now, don't let all these get you all fired up. That's going to be easy for us to just use a pattern on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and get this first part done. So how am I going to do that? Well, I know the entire period is one second. So here's zero. This goes to one. My period end there. My cycle ends there. And so I got to go back. I got to fill in the other values. What's between zero and one? One half. What's between zero and a half? One fourth. And now we just run the pattern all the way through. And if you want to use mixed numbers, you know, anything, I don't care. One fourth, one half. So one fourth, two fourths. Three fourths. Four fourths. And if you want to now say, since we're talking about time, be like, so one and one fourth, one and one half, one and three fourths, two, two and one fourth, two and one half, two and three quarters, three. Okay, there's my three seconds. I got everything labeled out. And so you're like, okay, well, now what? Well, now that's all the information I have. So, I start looking, I'm like, okay, it's a sine graph. So we start at zero. Go to the max, back to the center line, back to the min, back to the center line. Okay, there's my, there's my first one. Keep the pattern going. Max, center line, min, center line. There's my two seconds. And finally, center line max, center line min, center line to finish the job off and get the rest of my graph. One, two, three cycles, three seconds. What is the time when the height of the boat reaches its maximum for the second time? Right there, one and one quarter seconds. Take it straight from the graph in this case. Sometimes we can have a little calculator help, but here I don't think we need it. So we get that worked out. Now, let's keep playing. Let's see if that kind of helped us here if we get to this next one. The height of the water in a bay varies sinusoidally, sine function again, over time. On a certain day off the coast of Maine, a high tide of 10 feet occurred at 5 a.m. and a low tide of 2 feet occurred at 3 p.m. Write a model for the height of the water as a function of time. Now, this time it looks like we got to find all the things. So the only thing we know so far is that it is a sign. Okay, that's always nice. We're also told the high tide, my max, of 10 occurred at 5 a.m. So I'm like, all right. Max is always, you know, center max, center min. So there's this. So that's 5 a.m. And a low tide, a minimum of two feet, two feet, occurred at 3 p.m. Now, there's lots of ways I can tackle this at this point. I could do it like we did the ones in number one and two up above, where I look at this and I go, okay, so let's see. My amplitude is max minus min divided by two. So eight divided by two is four. Okay, I can get that in. 
my center line is max plus min divided by 2. It's my k value. 12 divided by 2 is 6. I mean, again, could I have figured that out without putting it into a formula? What's the middle of 10 and 2? Yeah, probably. But again, that's being my center line, first, third, last point. So I've got, I've got my graph now. So the only thing left that I do not have at this point is my B value. So I got to figure out, okay, 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. No, I got to think. Let's see, seven hours and three hours is 10 hours. So 10 hours divided by two is five hours. So five hours, five more hours, five more hours, and five less hours as I go left. So you're like, okay. So if I take a peek at this, how many hours did it take for my cycle to end? 5, 10, 15, 20 hours for one cycle. So what does that mean? That means that my 2 pi over b is equal to 20, or 20 over 1. Solve for B. B is either one tenth pi or pi over 10. That is not squared on there, in case we were wondering. And I'm set. Okay, I've got my equation. Now, use your equation to predict the height of the water at 2 p.m. You're like, okay, well, I mean, 3 p.m., it's at 2. So it should be a little above that, but how would I go about doing that on my calculator? It depends on how you want to roll with this. If, let's see what mode we're in here. I might let that choose it for me. Okay, I'm in degree mode. So if I'm in degree mode, and your calculator probably will be when you do this. If I do four sine, okay, pi over 10, 180 divided by 10 is 18. T, 2 p.m. Now, don't put in 2. Okay, 2 p.m., how far in are we? 5, 10, 3 p.m. would be 15. So I believe that would be 14 hours in. We're going to try this out. We're going we're gonna to see how this goes. Plus 6. Does that seem reasonable? You're like, wait, now where'd you get those numbers again, Hardy? 18 is doing 180 divided by 10, because again, that's in radian mode. I put it into degrees. Could I have put pi over 10 and had it in radian mode? Sure. The 14 that I put in is the number of hours after we started this whole thing. If I started at 12 p.m., which I've got here, which I think should be 12 a.m. Good job, Hardy. It is. That's 12 a.m. A.M. Hurry. So I'm 5, 10, 3 p.m. would have been 15 hours. So that's where the 14 is coming from that I put in here. And then just plus 6. So about 2.2, about 2.2 feet. Okay. That's probably the trickiest thing of this is just reminding yourself of that. But again, you can go either direction with those. All right. Just a couple more because we're really just doing this to intro you to this. There's, there's going to be one question about this on the test. I will tell you that in advance. But you're going to see a lot of these form the same way. So let's, let's keep rolling here. I need to stop talking so much and keep doing things here. Paddle wheel of the SS Brogan was 13 feet in diameter and revolved 30 times per minute when moving at top speed. Okay, so this wheel is doing revolutions at 30 per minute. Good to know. Using the speed and starting from a point at the very top of the wheel, write a model for height, h, at 
end of the paddle relative to the water surface as a function of time in minutes. Okay, lots of things to take into consideration here. If I finish reading, assume the paddle is two feet below the water surface at its lowest point. Okay, well, that's good to know. So my min is going to be at negative two. How can I figure out my max if they didn't tell me? If this wheel is 13 feet in diameter, okay, and the bottom, I'm just going to do this super light because this isn't actually part of my graph. So here's my wheel. The bottom's here. It's 13 feet to get to the top of the wheel. Negative 2 plus 13 would put my max at 11. Ooh, that was kind of funky. Okay, to deal with. So I see that. I'm like, okay, we're going to be starting at the top of the wheel. Now that should tell me something. If I'm starting at the top, sign don't start up there. Sign starts at zero. This is going to be a cosine function. Ooh. Okay. So we're starting at the very top. And so if I'm doing cosine, I go from the top to my midline to my bottom. Whoops, I went a little too low there. And then back up to my high point. So I got to find my midline still. Still do that the same way. So I'm going to do the midline first this time. So we add our min and our max. 11 plus negative 2 is 9 divided by 2 is about 4.5. Get our midline in because that's going to be these two points. So I've got my cosine going here. So basically, you're like, so if it starts around zero, it's probably sine normally. Okay, normally. If it starts up there, it's going to be cosine. So you're like, okay, what else? Amplitude, still got to find it. Max minus min divided by 2. 11 plus 2 is 13. Divided by 2 is 6.5. So I've got that. I know when I get my x, I know I'm going to have a midline of plus 4.5 on the end. So we know that. Here we go. Back to period again. So you're like, well, wait a minute. So how am I going to figure this part out? One last thing we haven't chatted about yet. It revolves 30 times or 30 cycles in a minute. So if there's 60 seconds in a minute and this thing goes around 30 times, it means it's going to take 2 seconds per cycle. In other words, the period is 2. So if the period is 2, of course we start at 0, we're not going anywhere. Between 0 and 2 is 1. Between 0 and 1 is a half. And so it's going to keep cycling and keep going up and down like that all the way through. So now I'm like, okay, so if my period is 2, that's going to be 2 pi over b. And here we go again. 2b is 2 pi. b equals pi. Pi t. We're done. They're not asking us for other stuff this time. So we don't have to do all the other things. And I'm thankful for that. All right. Let's, let's play one more. Let's play one more. Just, just to be sure. Um, no hints that something similar to this one's going to be on the test. Oops. Did, did I just say that? I just said that. Okay. Suppose a Ferris wheel has a radius of 20 feet and operates at a speed of three revolutions per minute. The bottom car is four feet off the ground. The bottom car is four feet off the ground. Write a model for the height of the person above the ground whose height when t equals zero on the axis is h equals 44. Which makes sense because if the radius is 20 feet, the diameter would be 40. Four plus 40 is 44. And I'm even gonna go so far, look out Hardy, 
What's in the middle of 4 and 44? 24. I'm just going to do it instead of doing it in a formula this time. I can still do the formula. I mean, I could still say, you know, my center line is max plus divided by 2, 48 divided by 2. Okay, 24. I did it mathematically now. Did it mathematically. My amplitude, max minus min divided by 2, is 20. So you're like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm with you so far, Hardy. I'm with you so far. And so I look, and I'm like, again, they're telling me on the axis we're starting at the maximum. So once again, if I start at the maximum, I'm going to be at the center line, I'm going to be at the minimum, I'm going to be at the center line, I'm going to be back at the maximum. So a lot of this is going to take care of itself for me. So you're like, guess what? Yeah, Hardy, we, we still need to do that whole period thing one more time. Three revolutions per minute. 60 divided by 3 is 20. So 20 seconds per cycle. In other words, that's my period. So my period is 20. I start from a standstill. Let's fill in the other numbers. Havesies, havesies, 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds. Then we go again. Then we go again. So, again, we're at cosine. Got my amplitude. We'll get to our period part here. We still got to do that other part here. So, 20 is 2 pi over b. My period is 2 pi over b. 2 pi equals 20 b. 20 b equals pi over 10. So use your equation to predict the height of the rider 90 seconds into the ride. Okay, this is just me. Could I play the calculator game like I did before? Yes. Do I want to, though? This time I don't think I need to, and here's why. So if I keep this pattern going, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, you're like, Hardy, why did you go back down here? Because think about it. If this was to keep going, where's my next point going to be? Back to the center line. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. Okay, Hardy is going with four feet. Now, Let's say you're like, mm, I don't know if I want to play that game. I might go back to the beginning. The, the bad things could happen already. Bad things. Okay, if you're worried about bad things, we can come back in here. Okay, 20 cosine. If you're in degrees, you need to put this into degrees. So 180 divided by 10 is 18 times. This time, 90 seconds. So you're like, okay, Hardy. Can I put 90 in? Let's see. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> it works that way too. Okay. So if I'm looking for some of this, I use the graph and just follow the pattern, or I can plug it literally into my calculator. Okay. Your job, your job. Got to make sure. Do I actually have the worksheet with me? I do. I do. When you get to the worksheet, here's what I want you to do. Okay, front only, skip number two. You're like, wait a minute, Hardy, that's only three problems. You're right, it is. It is three problems and three problems alone. Use your examples, play with these as best you can. We'll chat a little more next time. Thank you for being with me, and I hope you have learned a lot.